Hi, my name is Chong Wan Xin. Welcome to Group 9 presentation. Our group title is COVID-19 Effect on Malaysia Financial Institution. And our group member have Liu Mei Xin, Hanisa Matihon, Tam Jian Sun, William Tan Chun Xiang, and Tan Jian Xiang. Hello, my name is Hanisa. So before we go through the introduction part, let me present a little bit about our group project abstract. So basically, this project um, have been done to study about the COVID-19 effect on Malaysia's financial institutions. However, the study conclude that most commercial activities had to be suspended until the pandemic was contained. This has happened because of the whole lockdown that governed by government. Therefore, to study this matter in more details, our group have done research and analysis on the COVID-19 effect to Malaysia's financial institutions. According to the research, we can conclude five uh, very significant effects, which is lowering interest rate, operational risk, depressed financial institution valuation, low profitability, and also the low market volatility. So what is financial institutions? It can be defined as a business that lends money, asset deposits, trade securities, and risk capital. Financial institutions also offer a variety of financial services to customers. At the same time, it helps the clients to raise funds and invest their money. Financial institutions also help people and corporations to access money when needed. There are three major impacts of COVID-19 that influence the financial institu institution of Malaysia. For the first uh, major impact is low interest rate is having a negative effect on the profitability or core banking in major market. The second major impact is the central government debt increase. And the third major impact is foreign direct investment net flows decrease. Hi, my name is Jen Seng. Now I will continue with the part of the low interest rate. So interest rate is the amount that a lender charges a borrowers for the use of asset on the top of principles. So the money generated from the deposit accounts at the banks or credit unions is likewise subject to an interest rate. So this graph is about the real interest rates in Malaysia in year 2011 to year 2021. So in year 2020, the Malaysian real interest rate is 4.76 and the year 2021, Malaysia real interest rate is negative 2.13%. As we can see from the graph above, Malaysia real interest rate dropped by 6.9% in year 2021 compared to year 2020. So thus, the real interest rate dropped to the lowest levels in recent memories. Next, we will talk about the ADS diagram. So as we know, one of the COVID-19 effects on Malaysia financial institutions is lowering interest rates. So borrowings becomes more affordable with lower interest rates, and this often encourages investment and spending. As a result, economic growth and total demand increase. Additionally, the rise in ADE, which is demand increase, can lead to inflationary pressures. And it is because it decreases the incentive to save, and it will reduce the return on saving and provide by lowest interest rate. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is William Tang Jun Xiang. Now I want to talk about the operational risk. The epidemic post novel operation issue that puts bank business continues plan to the test, BCP. Financial institution increased focus for management and resources dedicated toward maintaining the system robustness. Firstly, of the operational risk is for the BCP preparation for a long time or large scale description for companies, some steps were taken by BCP grade towards dealing with short term or local list descriptions. Example brought on the description in the electricity supply online attacks and natural diseases. Secondly, is stability of the security operation center SOC, the ability to monitor the technological security posture in environment of diversified and rising connections to internal corporate networks. Financial institutions require SOCs can monitor the technological security. Lastly, is preparation for a complete headquarters shutdown. Some financial institutions travel quickly swifting all operationals to the alternate site beside that can remote working arrangement after the locations of their headquarters or main office were subject to enhanced MCO. Despite that fact that BCP generally consider the inability of financial institutions assess their main premise, EMCO. Hi, my name is Tam Jensun. Today, I would like to present about depressed financial institution valuation 
which is one of the effect of COVID-19 on Malaysia financial institution. According to the chart, we can see that the share price of Malaysia Publicity Listed Bank and FBM KLCI is showing a decreasing trend due to the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic breakout. The decreasing trend share price of the Malaysia Publicity Listed Bank will depress the valuation of the bank. This situation happened because the market lost confidence in the banking sector, therefore led of the investor going to invest in the banking sector. Next is a research about observation of the share price of CIMB and Papri Bank Berhad during the COVID-19 pandemic. The share price of CIMB Bank Berhad dropped to 3 ringgit and 45 cent from 4 ringgit 85 cent for the one unit share and Papri Bank Berhad dropped to uh, 3 ringgit 27 cent from 3 ringgit and 71 cent for the one unit share. The share price take nine about 39.03% for the CIMB bank and 31.79% for Papi Bank. The variation of CIMB bank and Papi Bank also will be depressed because the relationship between valuation and the share price is directly proportional. Next is about the median price to book ratio of Papi C listed bank. The median price to book ratio for listed bank declined to 0.59 times in October 2020. It demonstrates how concerned investors are about how the market would affect bank's trading profit. Given the recurrent repayment assistance measure and the lack of transparency about asset quality, the lower medium price to book ratio throughout the pandemic indicated investor worry about bank's earning capability and the possibility of unacknowledged loss. It will depress the valuation of the company. Thank you. The COVID-19 outbreak has a negative impact on the nation's financial institution profitability. Whereas GDP and Malaysia financial institution profitability are positively related. In 2020, due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the GDP in Malaysia has reduced by 7.74%. However, there is a positive relationship between GDP and the financial institution profitability. Therefore, lower GDP rate will result in lower financial institution profitability in 2020. The declining GDP implies that the Malaysian economy was deteriorating, while reduce the wage growth and cost the money supply to contract. The economists interpret that the declining GDP is a sign of the impending recession. We can further explain the relationship between GDP and the financial institution profitability by using random effect model analysis. Based on the finding, we can see that there is a significant positive relationship between GDP and the financial institution profitability during the COVID-19 pandemic. In poor economic condition, when GDP rates lower, it will result in lower return on asset. That is, if the GDP decreased by 1%, the ROA will decrease by 0.09 percentage point on average and vice versa. Malaysia will experience an economic downturn during the pandemic. In an economic downturn, a lower GDP rate will result in lower profitability for financial institutions. This is due to a decrease in purchasing power and the ability for the investor to invest in stock. During the COVID-19 pandemic, individuals in poor condition are permitted to obtain loan. However, they have difficulties in repaying the loans. This is due to the reduced solvency of domestic borrowers in the poor economic conditions. This increased the bank default risk by increasing back debts resulting in lower profitability for financial institutions. Therefore, GDP has a significant relationship with the financial institution profitability during the COVID-19 pandemic. To summarize, the COVID-19 outbreak will have a negative influence on the financial institution profitability. What is market volatility? The frequency and amount of price swings whether they be up or down are together referred to as market volatility. In this graph, shows the non-resident outflows from the domestic stock market falls down. The reason is the investor 
are worried about how the pandemic will affect the economy. Also, the effect on stock prices was offset by domestic retail investors, healthcare and technology stocks. Next, this graph shows the market volatility has gone down. The reason is the markets are still sensitive to news about COVID-19, the worsening of trade tensions, and changes in domestic politics. Besides that, this graph shows the domestic bond market had a brief spike in bond yields. This is a result of a steady rising level of non-resident investors, including governments and central banks, who participate in the local bond market to improve the investor sentiment on a global scale. Apart from that, this graph shows the measures taken by the bank to make it easier people to get money, help domestic investors keep to buy Malaysian government bonds. Because it has a slight drop in demand for long-term bonds at auction. In addition, the Malaysian Government Securities MGS, increased in March because the market for corporate bonds continue to function without any significant disruptions. So, the business efforts to improve their cash flow and take advantage of low interest rate net corporate bonds also increased. As a result, the level of volatility on financial markets will stay high in the short future. As conclusion, there are five types of COVID-19 effect on Malaysian financial institutions include lowering interest rate, operational risk, depressed financial institution valuation, low profitability, and low market volatility. By lowering interest rate, the economic growth and dollar demand will increase and decrease the incentive to save. Also, it lowers the borrowing prices and interest rates on mortgage. Secondly, the operational risk will affect the financial institution because of the preparation for a long time or large scale disruptions for companies. So, financial institutions must update their risk assessment to examine how the pandemic influenced the resources, IT infrastructures, and ability to handle the workers and individuals utilizing online banking service for a long period. Thirdly, the effect of COVID-19 on Malaysia's financial institutions has depressed the financial institution valuation. The reason is the banks were worth less than they had been worth before because the price of the bank's shares decreased, which means the value of banks also decreased. In addition, low profitability can cause well-capitalized, profitable financial institutions can protect a country's real economy because losing banks worsened and prolonged a country's financial troubles. Furthermore, low market volatility can cause the market activities such as buying government assets help stop a possible market crash and lower the volatility of the bond market. So, the pandemic of COVID-19 made a lot of effects to the financial institution of Malaysia. We are hopeful this sector will continue to grow in Malaysia in the years to come. Thank you for watching our video.